In this lesson, we're going to talk about the law of sines. So let's go over the formula. So let's say if we have a triangle where this is angle A, B, and angle C. Across angle A, you have side A. Across angle B, there is side B. And across angle C is side C. So the letters that are capitalized represents the angles. The lowercase letters represents the side lengths. And here's the equation that corresponds to this triangle. Side A over sine A is equal to B over sine B, which equals C over sine C. So you could use this equation, which is known as the law of sines, to find any missing angles or sides in a triangle. And if you recall, the three angles of a triangle must always add up to 180 degrees. Any three-sided figure will always add to 180. So let's work on an example. Let's say if we're given angle A, which is 60 degrees, and we're given angle B, which is 70, and also side A. Let's say side A has a length of 8. Go ahead and solve the triangle. So you want to find everything that's missing. You want to calculate angle C, side B, and side C. The first thing I would do is draw a picture. So let's label this as angle A, B, and C. So we have the value of angle A. It's 60 degrees. And angle B is 70. To find angle C, we know that A plus B plus C has to add up to 180. So A is 60, B is 70. Let's find the missing value. 60 plus 70 is 130. And 180 minus 130 is 50. So the missing angle is 50 degrees. So that's angle C. Now we could use the law of sines to find the missing two sides. OK, what just happened here? Side A is 8. Let's solve B. So we're going to use this portion of the law of sines. Sine B, actually rather, B over sine B is equal to A over sine A. The law of sines have three fractions, but you only need to use two out of those three fractions at any given moment. Now let's go ahead and plug in what we have. We don't have the value of B, but we know that angle B is 70 degrees. Side A is 8, and angle A is 60. Now, in order to find the value of B, we need to cross multiply. So this is going to be 8 sine 70, which is equal to B times sine of 60. Now, in order to isolate B by itself, let's divide both sides by sine 60. So this is what you want to type in in your calculator. Type in 8 times sine of 70 degrees, and then divide that by sine 60. If you don't get the right answer, perhaps your calculator is in radian mode. So make sure to change it to degree mode. So you should get 8.68. So that's the value of B. Now let's go ahead and calculate the value of C. So we're going to use this equation. A over sine A is equal to C divided by sine C. So we don't need B in this example. Side A is 8 divided by sine of angle A, which is 60. We're looking for C, and angle C is 50. So once again, let's cross multiply. So this is going to be 8 times sine of 50, which is equal to C sine 60. So now let's divide both sides by sine 60.
So C is going to be 8 times sine of 50 degrees divided by sine of 60 degrees. So C is equal to 7.07. .07. And that's it. So that's how you can find everything in this triangle. That's how you can use the law of sines to find the missing angles and missing sides. Now let's try another example. So let's say angle A is 42 degrees, side A is 10, and side B is 9. So feel free to pause the video and solve the triangle. So once again, let's draw the picture first. So here we have angle A, B, and C. Angle A is 42 degrees. Actually, I should have put that here. Side A is 10. Side B is across angle B, so that's 9. So what we have is a side-side angle triangle. So it's an SSA triangle. Let's start by finding angle B. So we're going to use this formula. A over sine A is equal to B over side I mean sine B. A is 10, angle A is 42. Side B is 9, and our goal is to find angle B. So let's cross multiply. So what we're going to have is 9 times sine 42, which I'm just going to go ahead and get the decimal value of. That's about 6.022. And that's equal to 10 times sine of angle B. So now let's divide both sides by 10. So 0 0.6022 is equal to sine of B. Now in order to find angle B, you need to take the inverse sine of 0 0.6022. So arc sine of that answer will give you an answer that's 37.03 degrees. Now, sometimes you may have more than one solution. So anytime you're using the inverse sine function, you need to keep in mind you may get two answers. The second answer, angle B could be 180 minus 37.03. And let's just round it to 37, just to keep things simple, because 37.03, that's very close to 37. So 180 minus 37, that's 143. Now here's a question for you. Are we going to have one triangle or two triangles in this problem? Is there one solution or two solutions? The first solution will always work. But what about the second solution? Is this angle possible? It turns out that it's not. If you add angle A and angle B, 42 plus 143, that's 185. That exceeds the maximum angle that could be inside a triangle, which is 180. The sum of all three uh, angles in a triangle has to be 180. So if these two angles exceed, or if it's equal to 180, it won't work. It has to be less than 180. So because those two angles add up to a value that's greater than 180, we're only going to have one triangle instead of two triangles. So we can get rid of the second solution. So angle B is 37 degrees. Now let's go ahead and find angle C. So we know that A plus B plus C is 180. So to find angle C, it's just going to be 180 minus the other two angles. So it's 180 minus 37. Well, A is 42. So it's going to be 180 minus 42 minus 37. 180 minus 42 is 138. And 138 minus 37, that's 101. So that's the value of angle C. So now we could find 
the last missing side, side C. So let's use this formula. A divided by sine A is equal to C over sine C. Side A, we know it's 10. Angle A is 42. Side C, we're looking for that. Angle C is 101. So let's cross multiply. 10 times sine of 101 degrees. That's 9.8163. And that's equal to C times sine 42. So side C is going to be 9.8163 divided by sine 42, which is 14.67. Sometimes it's good just to glance at your answers to see if it makes sense. The smallest or the shortest side is going to be across the shortest angle. Side B is the shortest side, and notice that it's across the lowest angle, which is 37. Side C is the longest side, and it's across the longest angle. So just by looking at that, you can tell if your answers make sense or not. So if you see a very large angle, associated or across a very small side. You know something is wrong. So that's just a quick way to see if you have the right answer or if your answer uh, makes sense. Here's another example of an SSA triangle. Let's say that angle A is 75 degrees and side A is 8 and let's say that side C is 9. Go ahead and solve the triangle. So let's start with a picture. As usual, we're going to call this angle A, B, and C. So angle A is 75 degrees, side A is 8, side C is 9. So let's start by finding angle C. So let's use this formula. Side C over angle C, or sine of angle C, is equal to side A over sine of angle A. C is 9, A is 8, and angle A is 75. So let's cross multiply as usual. 9 times sine of 75, that's 8.8. 693. And that's equal to 8 times sine of angle C. Now let's divide both sides by 8. So 8.693 divided by 8, that's about 1.089. And that's equal to sine of C. So to find angle C, we need to take the arc sine or the inverse sine of 1.089. Now if you type in arc sine of 1.089 in your calculator, it will give you an error. Sine has a limited range. It's between negative 1 and 1. So if you try to take the arc sine of a number that's larger than 1, it's not going to work. What this means is that this triangle has no solution. We can't solve it. So there's nothing we could do with this problem. Let's try this problem. Let's say that angle A is 30 degrees, side A is 7, and let's say we're given side B, which is 8. Take a minute and work on this uh, example. Always start with a picture. So angle A is 30 degrees, side A is 7 and B is 8. So the first angle we need to find is angle B. So let's use this equation. A over sine A is equal to B divided by sine of B. So A is 7 and capital A is 30. B is 8. We need to find angle B. So let's cross multiply. 8 times sine of 30. Sine 30 is 1 half times 8, that's 4. 
and that's going to equal 7 sine b. So 4 divided by 7 is equal to sine b. So therefore, angle b is equal to the arc sine of 4 over 7. And so that's going to give you about 34.85 degrees. So that's angle B. Let's round that to 34.9. Now, we need to see if we could get a second so uh, solution or a second triangle. So we're going to subtract 180 by 34.9. So that's 145.1. Now, if we add this new angle with the pre-existing angle, notice that it's less than 180. 30 plus 145.1 is 175.1. So therefore, we can get two possible solutions. Whenever you're about to get two possible solutions, it might be wise to draw a second triangle. So the pre-existing values will remain the same. A is going to still be 30, and side A is 7, side B is 8. But angle B now is 145.1. So that's the difference. Now let's get rid of a few things. So let's calculate angle C in the first triangle. So that's going to be 180 minus 30 minus 34.9. So let's subtract those values. So you should get 115.1. And now for the second triangle, it's going to be 180 minus 30 minus 145.1. So this is going to be 4.9 degrees. Now, we got to find side C for both triangles. And then we'll look at our answers to see if it makes sense. So let's use this formula. C over sine C is equal to A over sine A. C, we don't have the value of C. We need to find it. Angle C is 115.1 in the first example. A is 7 and angle A is 30. So what we need to do is we need to multiply 7 by sine of 115.1 and that's going to equal C over sine 30. So to get C by itself we need to divide both sides by sine 30. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that now. So you should get 12.7 for side C. Now let's do the same thing for the second triangle. So this time angle C is 4.9 degrees. A is still 7. So this is going to be 7 times sine of 4.9 which is equal to C times sine of 30. And then we're going to divide both sides by sine 30. So 7 times sine 4.9 divided by sine of 30, that's going to give you 1 point, I guess you could round it to 1.20 or just 1.2. Now, Looking at the first triangle, does it make sense? Notice that the shortest side is across the lowest angle, which is 30. The longest side is across the largest angle, which is 115.1. So that makes sense. Looking at the second triangle, 1.2 is the shortest side, which is across the smallest angle. 
8 is the longest side, and that's across the largest angle. So both triangles make sense, and that's how you could solve it. So now you know how to solve a triangle when there's two solutions. So anytime you're solving for an angle, like we got 34.9 for angle B, find a second angle. Find an angle that's supplementary to it by taking 180 and subtracting by 34.9. That gave us 145.1. And then once you get that second angle, add it to the pre-existing angle. If the sum is less than 180, then it's possible that you can have two triangles. If the sum is greater than 180, then there's only one solution. Only one triangle can be formed.